This video demonstrates targeted ice stand placement near aqueous veins. This is the left eye uh, here looking infranasally at uh, an aqueous vein. These are typically 50 microns in diameter and emerge directly off of the canal. Here we're identifying the position of the aqueous vein near the canal itself. Here, uh, supranasally, we identify a large aqueous vein, and you can see there's a couple little branches that meet up to form that aqueous vein, identifying again where they seem to enter middle limbus at the uh, canal position. We will then place uh, ink spots where we feel these aqueous veins are positioned along the canal. There typically are four or five of these aqueous veins throughout the uh, eye. Um, here the, is the gonioscopic corresponding image here where those marks have been placed. And it's at these marks where we're going to plan on placing, in this case, uh, two eye stents to be placed directly where we feel those aqueous vein um, systems are present. Most of these aqueous veins are present more in the inferior quadrant as been shown by previous studies. Um, we identify here again an infranasal area where we place the stent. Although there was no blood reflux initially after the presence of the eye stent within the canal, we see blood reflux emerge. The second device is placed here, again in, the, in this case in the supranasal quadrant, nearby where we feel that aqueous vein was present. And uh, you can see the position of that device is just slightly superior to where those marks were placed. The uh, inferior uh, infranasal one is placed basically right on where that mark was present. After cataract surgery, um, the irrigation aspiration hand police is used to remove the viscoelastic. And we're going to use the irrigation to increase and decrease the pressure in the anterior chamber actually to show blanching uh, of the episcleral aqueous vein present here. This is in the infranasal quadrant. And we're just going to, going to watch here as the blood reflux present here blanches out with the uh, irrigation uh, within the anterior chamber to increase the pressure and cause uh, the aqueous to pass through the eye stent into the canal and then through the aqueous vein. And theoretically, again, by placing these devices in the proximity of the aqueous vein uh, orifice, we feel that uh, we can directly uh, uh, pass aqueous uh, through the distal upflow system and therefore theoretically reach a lower pressure by uh, eliminating some of the resist resistance to that aqueous reaching those veins. Again, with the idea being and as you watch here, you can see the uh, blood fill up the vein as the pressure is dropped in the anterior chamber, followed by irrigation to increase the pressure in the eye, uh, showing the blanching of the vein. So this, this device looks to be placed uh, quite well in terms of the position, right by where that mark was placed at the limbus, where the aqueous vein is. You also will note, actually, some of the smaller vessels also blanch around the area infranasally as well. Now, the uh, supranasal vein we see here present, uh, despite the... Uh, um, irrigation into the anterior chamber and the placement of a device in the vicinity where we thought the vein would be emerging the canal from the canal shows very little blanching, certainly as far as that major aqueous vein. There is some blanching superiorly, but uh, the aqueous vein itself does not appear to be affected much by the placement of the device. And so, uh, again, uh, in these cases here, um, positioning we feel is important. And we're going to say, look at this and say, hmm, maybe we should place that device a bit more nasally where there is, does seem to be a, a tributary vein that uh, seems to meet up with that larger aqueous vein. So here we're going to go literally about a clock hour uh, or so away from the initial initially placed eye stent. Now placing a third eye stent here in this case, the idea being again the third eye stent may be placed in a more ideal position uh, to, for aqueous to directly reach that aqueous vein. Um, the idea here is that there is very little circumferential flow of aqueous uh, both physiologically and after eye stents have been placed. But if the eye stent is placed in the area where the vein is, we'll see the, the difference. And here actually we see now uh, some nice blanching laminar flow within the um, vein itself with the pressurization within the anterior chamber. Dramatic difference simply by placing an eye stent about a millimeter and a half nasally from where the initial stent was placed. Probably in a more ideal location in terms of where that aqueous vein uh, emerges. This, this is an interesting vein in the sense that you see two two different um, uh, smaller veins that meet up to, to, to form this aqueous vein, and it's likely that the uh, placement of the third device near that um, more nasal vein here in the supranasal quadrant made a difference. And so theoretically, these veins have high flow rates potentials um, to substantially lower pressure within the anterior chamber. Um, some, some have theorized that the, uh, 
use simply of two aqueous veins may uh, lower pressure to physiologic levels. And so targeted eye stent placement near the aqueous veins may prove to be a further benefit in IOP lowering.